Hello everyone. I welcome you all. In the previous video, we used more than 200 descriptors in order to build a machine learning model for predicting the solubilities of organic compounds. But the model that we built, uh, although gave good predictive power, but was in reality a black box model. A black box model refers to a type of machine learning or statistical model whose internal workings are not transparent or easily interpretable. Basically, there are so many features that the model is trained on that it becomes difficult to comprehend the relationship between model's input and outputs as a result of which the model is seen as a black box. However, in scientific community, it is always desired to know the underlying features responsible for the development of the model. So in this video, we will try to build an interpretable model. And how are we going to do that? We are going to use some algorithms which would extract important features responsible for the development of the model. So what I'm going to do is, as usual, I'm going to import uh, important libraries such as pandas, numpy, seaborn and matplotlib. Along with that, uh, I'm also going to be needing some classes and modules from sklearn for building our model. So let's go ahead and import that. Now our truncated data set, which had 281 descriptors, uh, is stored in this file. So I'm going to load this file and again show you the first five data points. So this was our data we had uh, name of the names of the organic compounds, their smile strings, Meyer log of solubilities, which was our target, and 281 molecular descriptors, which were calculated using Modred library. Uh, let me just go ahead and define our dependent and independent variables. So this is our target and uh, dependent variable. So I am storing it in a y variable. Now just to refresh our memories and for comparison purposes, I am again going to be building uh, models using uh, these 281 descriptors. So let's just go ahead and scale our data set. Uh, this is the same code that I used in the previous videos. So uh, let's just run this and see our scale data set. So this is the scale data set. Uh, we need this scaling because we need the data to be normally distributed. Next step is splitting our data into train and test split. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I am first uh, using linear regression model to be, uh, fit our training data. So it has been successfully fit. So next I'm going to check R2 score for both training and test sets. So as we discussed before, um, the training uh, R2 score was pretty good 0 0.95 and the test was uh, quite less. So we see quite a lot of overfitting here and in random forest. We saw pretty good predictive power with R2 score of test set around 0 0.86 and a training set training score was quite high as well. But still we saw some overfitting. Now what we are going to do next is we are going to uh, extract important features responsible for the development of this random forest regressor. So the first algorithm that I want to talk about is scikit-learns feature importance algorithm. In scikit-learn, the feature importance in a random forest regression model can be obtained through the feature importance attribute. This attribute provides a relative importance scores for each feature in the data set based on how much each feature contributes to reducing the impurity, example mean squared error in the construction of the decision trees within the random forest. Uh, now one disclaimer uh, that all these algorithms that I'm uh, going to be talking about in this video are generally based on tree based algorithms. For example, random forest and extra tree, uh, uh, you know, regressor, you can use them for classifiers as well, uh, but they are just going to work on these tree based algorithms and might not work on uh, other algorithms. Now, in order to extract features using feature importance algorithm of sklearn, all we need is this feature underscore importances underscore attribute. And we need to use this on our render, random forest estimator. And we are going to be storing the these values uh, as a numpy array in importance variable. So let me just go ahead and run this first and show you what this variable uh, has in it. So this importance variable 
is a numpy array and it has the feature importance value of each and every descriptor that we have used in building our model so basically since we use 281 descriptors it has 281 feature importance values corresponding to each descriptor in our data set so what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna be storing this as a dictionary and then i am using data frame method in order to convert these dictionaries containing feature as a key and importance as a value into a data frame so let me just run this and i'm gonna be showing you how our data set looks like so our data is stored in df underscore imp so you can see here we have the uh, name of the features and their importance and i have sorted these values in the increasing order now what we are going to do is we are just going to plot uh, let's say first six descriptors as a bar plot so this is a bar plot and uh, you can see filter it logs is the most important descriptor in our model and it has an importance value of around uh, you know 0 0.7 basically uh, it has contribution of around 70 percent and then there is a drastic in decrease uh, you know Lipinski it's, it has an importance of maybe around 0.75 or 8 and all other descriptors are you know closer to zero so mainly these these six descriptors are kind of the uh, I would say most important descriptors uh, which has helped us in building a random forest model right so uh, obviously we are going to be now uh, building the model again using these uh, you know four or five or even these six descriptors but before that let me just uh, talk about some other uh, feature importance algorithms which are out there and let's uh, compare uh, their results with uh, this algorithm right so Uh, the next algorithm that I want to talk about is again scikit-learns permutation importance algorithm and permutation importance works by permuting the values of a single feature and measuring the change in the model's performance example accuracy in case of classification and mean squared error in case of regression and the idea is that important features when permuted will cause a significant drop in the model performance. Uh, scikit-learn provides the permutation underscore importance function to calculate and extract permutation importance basically what it does is it takes the feature out and then check its impact on the uh, model's performance and if it uh, drastically impacts the performance then that means um, that feature is important so that's what this permutation importance does uh, for that we need to import this permutation underscore importance uh, class or uh, method and we are gonna be using this permutation underscore importance method with a random forest as our um, estimator and along with our test sets i'm putting random state of 42 just for the sake of reproducibility again the importances are gonna be stored in a variable called results and i am storing this as a dictionary in a uh, key as a key value pair so that I can later convert it into a data frame and that's what I'm doing here in this line of code then I'm going to be sorting the values in the order of increasing order so let's just uh, run this and have a look at our data frame so it has finished running the code and let's check our uh, data set So this is the data set containing the features and importance and as you can see here these are quite similar to what we have seen above. So let me just go ahead and again plot a, a bar plot so that we can visualize it and I'm just plotting these first six descriptors in our data set. Now you can see here uh, we have got the uh, bar plot and again in here as well the uh, most important descriptor is filter it log s and then Lipinski and then all these other descriptors and they are quite similar to what we have seen in here so third and uh, 
another very important uh, feature importance algorithm is SHAP feature importance. Uh, SHAP feature importance is based on Shapley values from cooperative game theory and it is used to explain the output of a model by assigning a value to each feature indicating its contribution to the model's prediction for a particular instance. And SHAP values consider all possible combinations of features and calculate the average contribution of each feature to the prediction. For this, we need to install this SHAP package and then we are going to be importing this. Next, we can get the feature importance uh, using SHAP with just two lines of code here and explainer will use tree shap algorithm to explain the uh, or to store the outputs of the tree model which is random for us in our case and then uh, we will call a shap underscore value method using our test set and the values will be stored in shap underscore values and then we are going to be plotting it uh, in here so this is what we have using shap feature importance and again uh, you know filter it log s is the most important descriptor here followed by lipinski and all these uh, are i think pretty similar uh, in here all these six descriptors so i think we have a consensus that uh, all these descriptors uh, at least the first six descriptors are responsible for high accuracies in our random forest model now the next obvious thing is to use these descriptors maybe four five or six uh, in our model and see if it uh, impacts our results so in here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna evaluate our models with reduced number of features so uh, what i'm gonna do is just take the first five descriptors from our permutation importance algorithm so i think these are the same in all our algorithms uh, filter it log s is the first one lipinski sic0 rncg ats 0 z and we are going to be talking about these descriptors uh, in the end but first let's see uh, what impact they have on our models so we need the scale data set so what i'm going to do is i'm going to slice our original scale data set using these five descriptors so let's do that and have a look at our data set this is underscore pi okay so this is our data set which we are going to be using with five descriptors to build our model and let's just have a look at our um, target as well so this is Meyer log of solubilities so let's just go ahead and split our data set into training and test set i am using the same random state of 45 and again uh, uh, simplest explanation is the best one so let's just first go ahead with linear regression uh, in here you can see that uh, on the test set we have got uh, r square value of 0 0.83 and on the uh, train we have got the r square value of 0 0.82 i think this is fantastic because previously we have seen that uh, with 281 descriptors we have got the training accuracy of 0.95 but the test was 0.62 so there was a lot of overfitting but in here although r scale has come down for the training set but uh, that for the test set it has uh, incremented a lot and i think uh, this is this is something which is highly desired in machine learning models that uh, there should be no overfitting and that's what we have uh, achieved here i think uh, if we include two or three or four more descriptors uh, it should bump up the uh, accuracy but right now i'm just sticking to the five descriptors and let me just show you the result with random forest regressor as well so in here you can see we have uh, r2 score for training of around 0 0.98 and for the test it's around 0 0.84 now uh, previously it's pretty much the same for test uh, it was 0 0.86 and for train it was 0 0.98 i think this is amazing as well we have truncated the data set to just five descriptors and we are getting the same accuracy now of course there is overfitting but uh, like i mentioned before in my videos these tree based models are prone to overfit and there there is a lot you can do you can hyperparameter tune and all those things which we can do to get these values close enough 
but the point here is clear that if possible we should always go with uh, less number of descriptors so as to uh, so as to make the model uh, more interpretable and less complex now with just five descriptors in hand we have seen that we have got pretty good results we can further go ahead and uh, analyze our descriptors and see whether these features hold well with a qualitative understanding of chemistry so we have seen that filter it log as was the most important descriptor and it represents the computed log of solubilities and what we are trying to do here is predict the uh, Meyer log of solubilities and obviously these computed log of solubilities are gonna have a huge impact on these Meyer solubilities so mm, its inclusion as the topmost descriptor is not unreasonable the second most important descriptor was Lipinski. Now if you remember from our previous videos, uh, this was a Boolean descriptor. Basically it has uh, true and false values and we converted the, them into uh, numeric values of ones and zeros. Uh, basically the compounds mm, uh, which would adhere to the uh, four rules of Lipinski would uh, have a value of one while the others would have a value of zero. And these uh, Lipinski rules just take into account the hydrogen bond donor acceptor uh, abilities molecular mass and calculated log p which is uh, nothing but a measure of solubility and of course if a molecule adheres to this rule it is obviously gonna be more soluble than the others so again its inclusion as a second uh, descriptor is quite relevant. One of the other descriptors uh, is SIC0 which takes into account the structural information content. Uh, so they basically belong to the IC or uh, information content class of MODRED and it just grabs information about what atoms are connected to what other atoms and how and apparently uh, that information is important to predict the solubilities. RNCG and RPCG they take into account the relative negative and positive charges respectively. You can think of them as uh, descriptors which can take into account non-covalent interactions. For example if we have a compound with large relative positive charge water can surround and thus stabilize these molecules more efficiently via electrostatic interactions and these interactions may enhance the solubility of these compounds in water. The other descriptor was ATS0Z. I'm not quite sure if it has much role to play in our model uh, because its uh, importance is quite less, closer to zero. But since it has made to our top six descriptors, it is worth mentioning here. Uh, these uh, descriptors generally take into account the autocorrelation of topological structure descriptors. Uh, and these uh, descriptors are quite common in quantitative structure activity relationship studies to correlate molecule structure with uh, biological activity or other properties of compounds. Apparently it has played some role in our machine learning model uh, in predicting the solubilities of organic compounds. And that is it for now. I'm quite sure there are many other uh, feature importance algorithms out there which can help us in identifying features from our machine learning models contributing most to their development. Uh, so please let me know in the comment section if you uh, know of any. And that is it for now. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.